Hey, everybody. Welcome to Song Swap. This is our one year anniversary. Uh, my name is Mike Weiss, and uh, along with uh, Jeremy Stein and uh, Wendy Free, we have uh, been working tirelessly all year to bring you an amazing uh, set of sessions that have all kinds of usable melodies for your davening. I hope, uh, hope you've enjoyed what we've done so far and uh, really looking forward to uh, what's coming in the next year. So if you've uh, if you've joined us in the past and you like what you see, just follow us, like us, thumbs up. I mean, what if you get a follow our channel, listen to the podcast. I mean, we've got podcasts on Google now. We've got uh, iTunes. We've got videos on the, on our website, Facebook page. I mean, we, however you can find us, we really hope to uh, we hope you will find us, and recommend us to your friends, and uh, follow us wherever you can. We have a, uh, an amazing session for you planned today, including our special guest, Eliana <coughs> Light. And we are, we are also <laughs> going to do our first ever after party. Oh, yeah. Kind of like a birthday party, I guess. But uh, we're going to see what happens. Uh, we're going to unmute everybody. And uh, uh, I don't know. Could Go be crazy. Balladon. Could be a balladon or, uh, you know, it could be awesome. I hope, I'm sure it'll be awesome. But uh, well, we're going to try that for the first time today. Um, but before I hand things off to uh, Jeremy and Wendy, uh, we always start out with a little music. And uh, today we're going to start out with uh, Eliana Light and her version of Ahabat's Ola. Mm -hmm. forward to hearing more from her in just a little while. And first we have Matt Osterklein and we are so looking forward to hearing especially a couple of the things you have to offer us today. Thank you. Um, so as the uh, as we hit daylight savings time uh, we get to that time of year where um, uh, we have lots of holidays in every faith tradition. Uh, I have two melodies that I've felt I've had I found effective um, from two different sources. Uh, they're both pretty short. Um, the first is uh, for Ma'ari Baravim. Uh, this is uh, I, I don't. It's an old Israeli folk song called Laila Laila, 
You probably heard it on like a Bikel recording, oh, no. sings it nice and low. Uh, and it works really well because if you, if you know the original song and if you're in a kaha where that's part of their sort of Jewish folk ethos, um, you're gonna hear it fits actually with the time, same times that, that the song says Lila, the prayer here in, in, uh, in uh, uh, Mari Varavim says Lila. So this is what it sounds like. Right back into Nusach, so this little shtickle of melody you can probably use. You could probably use it other points in the davening. It's nice and haunting and very sort of, uh, I feel it's sort of, uh, it's, in, it's in that nice, it's in a very wintry feel. So you could use it whenever. Um, I like using it for that prayer. Uh, the second thing I wanted to share briefly, if I can, um, is a Vishamru. Um, <laughs> I've used this for, don't laugh yet. Uh, I've right. <laughs> used this for uh, um, Shabbos morning and for, you could use it for Friday night. Um, the, the structure of it is A, A, B, B, A, in terms of the melody. The original melody is, uh, I think, A, B, A, B. Um, but let me sing this Visham Room, um, which again is very sort of, it's in, the, in that beautiful minory thing, not very, not different from the type of minory heard for Ahab Avalam. Visham So the very haunting, beautiful melody. The source is from, it's, uh, it's a Welsh Christmas carol called Kia Betlem Drev. You can watch Bryn, uh, Bryn Turple sing it online, much more Centurion-like. I heard that uh, when I was in chamber choir, I heard it sung and I'm like, oh, this is a beautiful melody. It's always stuck with me. And so I fussed with the structure of how the melody comes. And lo and behold, so for the, the few Welsh Christians that will be in your synagogue, they will know exactly what you're doing. And everyone else will hear a really beautiful melody and they won't have to worry about it. Just like they don't worry about who well okay who be new as well. Um, but uh, again, it's a very beautiful haunting melody, really works in the you know, there's so many minory haunting things that, that Jews like to do now. And, and these two melodies are of them. So I'm happy to share them with you today. Oh, Matt, I love Matt, that. That's so, it's so funny that you took that from a Welsh Christmas carol because <laughs> I, I actually um, took a, a melody that I found in, in the Henry V movie, the Henry Grana, Henry V movie. No, no, be so yes. <laughs> I use that. I use that for Ote Shalom. Oh, it, works, so it works great. It's awesome. <laughs> that's so great. I'll use that for my Jewish Shakespeare week here in Akron, but more on right. that another time. Uh, thank you, everybody. <laughs> well, I yeah. love that Rachel Rosenberg actually has a Welsh Christian turned to um, <laughs> in her congregation. Matt, thank you so much. Yeah.
Thank so you. Beautiful. I, I love yeah. both of them. And I think both of them are very, very reminiscent of, like you said, that winter feel, you know, where you're just. You just want to have mold warm and wine. Cozy right and a little haunting. And yeah, I loved it. Oh, beautiful. Beautiful. So um, before, do you know where we can find them? Um, uh, you notated. Um, mm -hmm. The Lila Lila might be in some sort of, just look for Lila Lila. It might be on right. Zemereshet online. Mm -hmm. Um, or anywhere you find old Israeli folk songs, uh, uh -huh. that's probably not as hard to find. Tuya Bet Vendref, I really don't know. Um, but don't if someone bothers me it. enough, I could put in its finale. I'm bothering bother like, you. It's, it's bother kind of like, uh, kind of like the prayer for Shelleg. If you do it in summer, you can bring snow. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's, uh, yeah. <laughs> well, I think we're all bothering you, so, because I don't even know how to search for that. I wouldn't even know how to spell it. <laughs> okay, now for next song swap, God willing, I'll have some uh, sheet music. Too. Awesome, sounds good. Thank you, everybody. Right. So before we go on, we have our first survey. As Mike Weiss mentioned at the beginning, this is the one year anniversary since we began song swap. So we have a question. Um, have you used any melodies you learned through song swap in your davening this past year? So I'm gonna click yes myself. Mm, me too. Can you guys see the, the responses yet? Nope. No? I don't know where they would be. It's almost, uh, it's almost, it's very close, like 50-50. Hmm. Good. People still going. We got uh, 45, 44% to 56%. 44% yes, 56% not yet. Let's uh, leave it at that for now. <laughs> Right. Cool. So Sarah Gella, are you are you there? Sarah? If not, I'll go. Um, Mike asked me to share um, an Abayadaya melody that we learned when we were in Uganda, and a lot of the, the popular melodies we've brought back have been the very upbeat, um, um, fast moving melodies, but they have a beautiful meditative micha mocha, which they sing um, just for the, the first section. And it goes like this. Micha mocha, Micha mocha, baili madonai. Micha mocha, nedar vakodesh. Norati lo do se fele. Micha mocha, micha mocha, baili madonai. And, love that. Love that. So, and so. just slow. Have meditate. you tried it with any of the other texts? I have not yet. I haven't. Um, I haven't yet. Um, it sounds I'm like sure you'd be able could. to use it. Yeah, maybe like. Shalom, oh, oh, I'm sure you could fit it in. Um, I would. I would. Since that is. Uh, since that is one of their special melodies specifically for Micha Mocha, I would recommend doing it there. And um, for many of us in um, Ashkenazi, uh, Nusach oriented congregations, um, easy enough to get into, if, even if you're starting in minor. <laughs> and so on. Just kind of go to major as you would uh, going into the Shema. So beautiful melody um, sung with a lot of kavana as we heard it uh, by the Abayadaya, the Jews of Uganda. Can I ask a question? Yes. Hi, I'm uh I actually want to do a, a Friday night service that features, forgive me for this thing that just went off, I'm just off that features these melodies. Um, 
uh, the Ab Abadiah melodies that you brought back. And if I recall, they're notated. Are they on the website? Where, where, how do we access? And various and people that, one that you just sang also on the website. Um, various people have notated them. I don't know if there's any official official uh, transmission thereof. But if uh, you email me, I can get you what I have. I would I would love. I mean, one of the most beautiful parts of this mission, it seemed to me, was your ability. Those of you who recorded or transcribed to um, to share these things, so we can share them and also, you know lift up the cause of our uh, brethren here. So I would so appreciate it. I'd, and and maybe, I think it would deserve, if you had a um, kind of a link to a set of um, recordings and transcriptions, could be either or both. I think that would be deserving of its own email to the full assembly. I really do. Like here it is, this is the direct link. This is how you can, you know, and, and also maybe a, a link to what should be said about their situation. Yeah, so there are actually- Very important things to say about that. There is a big project that's under underway. Um, more information. Uh, well, apparently, coming. Mike Stein has a kit of notation of the Abudaya music. Um, so you could, uh, that's what Mimi said. So Fantastic, thank um, you. I would yeah. love that. I bet you can get in touch with him. And be happy to share it with you. Okay. All right. All right. Would you like to introduce us to our feature guest, Mike? Yes, Eliana, are you there? Hello. Hello. Want to, uh, for those of you who don't know, this is Eliana Light. She is uh, an amazing uh, musician and educator, song leader, and uh, I, wa I, would I would love to let you introduce yourself and uh, tell us a little bit more about yourself and how you got, uh, how you got where you are in the, in the Jewish music world. And uh, we'll hear some of your stuff for Mari. And I, somebody is, is not muted and we're hearing, I think I got it. Okay. All right, great. So uh, Eliana, take it away. Let's, let's hear a little bit about your story. We want to hear it. Oh, great. Hi everyone. It's really great to be here today. So awesome. There's so many names that I know on this list. So hello, folks that I know, and hello, folks that I don't. Uh, we're all bound together in song, I suppose. So it's kind of like I know you, even if I don't already. Um, as we have said, my name is Eliana Light. I am coming to you from beautiful Durham, North Carolina, where I currently make my home after six amazing years in New York City. I grew up in Memphis, Tennessee. Uh, my father was a rabbi, and I was the biggest diva child you could ever imagine. I loved singing and performing and I liked leading services because it meant I got to stand on a stage and sing and everyone would look at me, which was my favorite thing in the world. Any of you might empathize with that. But then of course, as I got older, I realized that, oh, there's another reason that I love doing this. And it's because we're able to come together in song and it's less about me and it's more about everyone. And there's something really magical beautiful here and you could even call that God if you wanted to. Again, I didn't know all of this when I was seven. I just knew that I liked leading services and I, I don't know, there's like a big fast forward and I learned what a song leader was. I've been writing Jewish music since I was in fourth grade. I wrote a Modani where it's like the English, English verses Modani is a chorus in fourth grade. Maybe someday I'll sing that for you. Um, and I've been writing Jewish music ever since because it's, it's something that speaks to my soul and Music is a great tool for content transmission and for emotional resonance. And I think we're both um, with songs. So I've been writing Jewish music for years. And for the past, uh, for four years, I was the educa music education person at uh, Park Avenue Synagogue for three years and B'nai Jeshurun for a year in New York City, working with all levels of kids and families. And for the past two years, I've been freelancing um, doing residency work and doing consulting with synagogues to help them make, figure out what their vision for prayer and music is, figure out what their congregants want and where they are and how we can get them to that place. So that's me in a nutshell, I suppose. Wow, that's great. There's def there's so many things I want to ask you about, but I also want to make sure that we do some singing first. So uh, we're, uh, we're, out, we're about Mariv today. So uh, you sent me an extensive list of Basically, the, like, the whole yes. Can I see if I can share my screen? 
Yeah, sure, go ahead. Cool. Can everyone see this little Google Doc here? We should be able to, I think so. Great. Um, yeah. Just before I go through it, I wanna say that uh, often I find that when a synagogue especially is trying to do like a singing service, which often when I go to a synagogue for a weekend, they say we're gonna do a, a very singing musical service, you have this much time for Kabbalah Shabbat and uh, for Marv. I'm like, no, no, no. We're doing Kabbalah Shabbat so that we can have Kavana for Marv. Like, you gotta have Marv. I absolutely love Marv. The liturgy, the, the feeling of order and calm. I think that if we're able to parse a little bit more for people about what the message is and how in this scary world, imagining that there's an order and that day turns to night and night turns to day as crazy as things can get, that's a really powerful message for people. So elevate Mariv. I, you know, I did just, you know that, but I'm just telling you that anyway. Um, I can go through this little list I made and share some of my favorites. I like when you can use a tune twice in a service. I find especially when I'm going into a place for the first time, um, every melody has to have a way that people will already know it or will be able to sing it. So either it has to be incredibly catchy and easy to learn, which a lot of the melodies that I do are, but that doesn't dumb them down in any way. It has to be a melody we use more than once. It has to be call and response, or I have to have a core people in the room who already know the melody. And if it doesn't fit one of those four, I don't use it. Yes, it's meant to be a listening piece, right? And then it's explicitly a listening piece and that's okay. But if I want people to sing along, I have to have a way for people to be able to sing. So. For example, I love using Shachim, Joy Weisenberg's beautiful melody. It goes really well into But then if you go down to uh, the Shamru, the Shamru, it is trial. It's the only place it repeats. And I have a recording. I'll send this Google link in the chat so you can hear the recordings. And then it's like, oh, we know this already. We sang the Nigun a bunch of times. Yes? Oh, yeah. I, would, I would love to ask you, since you know, not necessarily everybody has ever heard that before, can you just sing, sing that Nigun through so that people can hear it? Sure. As the Nigun or as the Shamru? Um, why don't we start the Shamru. with the Shamru? Sure. Yeah. Okay. Um, <laughs> I, 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 I,
that's fantastic. Love it. Yeah, a lot of these melodies do double duty. Like for example, down for you, it's another Joey melody. Um, so in Kabbalah Shabbat, you could do but in Marv, you can do and you just do the whole thing on part A and it builds and builds and builds until people want to like explode into the B part once you've <laughs> sung all of the verses. That's always a fun way to, to end Mariv. Um, another, another double duty one is Nigun Chazak by Eitan Katz, which is like still my favorite Nigun I learned all year. That you will need a couple of people to know in advance because it has a call and response part, but I like starting with the B doing an A. So if you're going to do it, you know, I like doing it after the Ami wrapping up. So the B part, which is sung together, goes like this. Yeah. And again, not great breath control this morning, but you, you get the idea. A bunch of canters trying to like freak out. It's okay. <laughs> That's okay. You're doing great. We, well, we all you. have that. <laughs> um, <laughs> Until people get into it, and the call and response part, you are muted. You can respond after me. Oh, there's just so much energy. In the morning, I like doing it for a neck. But it goes really well for um, the Neymar, the Hayadonai, the we're like trying so hard not to sing with you. <laughs> <laughs> it's so hard. It's so hard. Um, it's so hard, especially with the passion that you put into it. You know, it's really, you're like, oh, please sing with me, please. please. <laughs> that's, that's the point. At least, at least right, that's right. The point. Um, I know we're hopping around, but that's kind of the, is that all of these things fit together. Um, the Ahavad Olam that was played before, I have as a congregational melody without an instrument. Um, it's beautiful. It's just got some of those long pauses that you'll need to pull in with some pretty things or or people that know that it's okay to improvise, you know, which is important for people. Um, the other Ahavad Olam that I have, it was written to go within the weekday Mariv structure, but it could probably be done for Shabbat Mariv. Um, I like using Ahavad Olam for meditation. I think the idea of a love that is greater than time and space is really beautiful thoughtful, and also difficult. Um, so or it's at least as difficult to get into what does that even mean. Um, so I'm not going to do the whole thing here. I think I have the medication in this recording but not I can think of how I do it. But this also has call and response elements and together elements. You'll kind of see it from the way my hands are.
every single ask people to get into a meditation. And I'll do the short version. I, again, it like takes a long time to do, but I think it's worth it. Um, because this is, I think, what we're trying to do is it says, you know, um, I have out of Lama a little better than time and space, but how are we supposed to get here? Let's just start with someone who you know loves you conditionally a parent, a friend, a partner, a child, or even just the love you receive from the universe every day. Can you imagine that person in front of you? Can you imagine them singing this to you? I love you with Ahavad Olam. And then you sing again, you say, and now you have learned from their love to love them back. You sing it again. And now you have learned from their love, love even more. Can you send your room? Can you send your love to everyone? in your city, in your country, in your world, and just kind of grows like that. It's the kind of thing that you have to build your congregation up to. Um, but I think it can be a very powerful moment. I'm not doing that whole thing before I sing a Havad Olam. I'll often say, put your feet on the floor, take a deep breath, close your eyes. Imagine that you are loved by a love greater than time and space. The fact is that you are, and that's a love that we can all share. And I think those little nuggets of Kavana are really important if we're gonna pray in a language that most standard as I read recently, if we're gonna sign our name to love letters we didn't write, then it's important that we know what's what's in those letters and what's in those words. Um, yeah, uh, do I have time to share another one? Yeah, sure, we'll share one more and then I have a few questions and then we'll uh, wrap up. Okay, great. Um, so even though it's no longer Elul or Tishrei, I thought I would share a melody for Psalm 27 as when it becomes Elo or Tishrei, um, it will be time to sing them again. And, and this one was written this year um, for, the, for the line. Um, I'll pull this up here if everybody can see. Um, Shema, and I use the name for God Havaya here because it's an inverse of Yodhe Vavhe. It keeps the root Lihiot and it has the same syllables. It makes it easy to sing. Um, that was a short version of that. Um, but it starts with the end because I think for human beings, first the need inside us to call out to that which is greater than ourselves, and then we call out, and it almost doesn't matter if we believe intellectually that there's something out there to listen. The need is there, and it's important to honor uh, that need. So it takes a while to sing, so I'm just going to sing it through once. Usually I would sing it, then do it as an igun, then sing it again. This also just works as an igun, with or without guitar, because why not? that for everything yeah eliana you know <laughs> while that is uh, seasonally specific maybe seasonally specific to uh the yamim noraim i think that uh, especially i think there are many opportunities to use that setting including um 
you know, here, I don't know if it's, it's a national thing, but here in Milwaukee, there's a Unity Shabbat uh, coming up to memorialize the victims in Pittsburgh. And I think that um, that's just one of many yeah. um, places where a setting like this would, uh, would be appropriate. Rani, Yisker service, Rani, but but also I I just think that the the melody itself is gorgeous. I just I want to use it for everything. <laughs> just want to find ways to just insert it everywhere. Um, but I mean, even just to begin your Mario service, I think would be a really nice way to do it. So, thank you. Yeah, I mean, what's what's really striking to me about about not not just this this setting, but all the, all the choices that you've made is 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 how much of your how much of your own uh, soul you know you pour into it? I can see it while you're while you're singing, even you know even in uh, over Zoom, you know it's it's just mm -hmm. you're, you're so your you know, your soul is just so exposed and and laid bare, and it it just really does something to. You know, I, I I wish I could daven with you. I would love to come and daven with you sometime. And I know that you've started two different minyanim and i know that you said i think you you, you said that the, the one you just started in north carolina is meant to be very different from the one you did in new york i wonder i was going to ask you about that can you talk about that for just one second absolutely um so when i went to new york um six years ago now my friend said so where's the vibrant no instrument traditional egalitarian friday night on the upper west side and i said Actually, I don't know if that is exists right now. Um, I was going to Romamo at the time. Um, I love, I, I appreciate instruments on Shabbat when done intentionally. Um, it's a tool just like everything else and tools can be used well or not, which is a whole other conversation that I'm happy to have with anybody. Um, but that's what he wanted. So I came up with the name Shira Badira as a joke, um, which means singing in an apartment, but we <laughs> So we kept it and it's been it's been going for six years and it's still going now, um, which is it started out straight up as a Karlbach minion. Um, but mostly at the time, because I was really bored with singing those same melodies over and over. I grew up in USY and um, that's what we did every week. We didn't change um, when my co-founder went to Israel for his rabbinical school year. I thought, haha, we're going to introduce new things and start introducing some Joy Wesenberg yeah. and some Tehillah and some stuff that we'd written. You know, very, very haha. Um, but, but it, but the same energy stayed, and it's become really a place of of collaboration and and deep singing, which is really beautiful. Um, here in Durham, one of the reasons I'm here is to co-create with this, um, with a community builder who I met here when I was working at Beth L when I came in a couple of times over the summer, two summers ago. Um, she's interested in the population that is spiritual and seeking and happen to be Jewish and don't know that spirituality can be found in Judaism, which um, as I meet people as a, as a young adult, I see all the time. For me, being Jewish can be compared to having a treasure buried in your own backyard. Like so many people go around the world searching for that treasure. And yet, sadly, they don't know because of their upbringing or because of the kind of synagogue they went to. Um, they don't know that the treasure is there in their own backyard. So like, how can they pay for it if they don't know that it's there? So that's, that's a whole different ball game. That's how do we do things that are both deep and meaningful and accessible. I think for me, those are always the goal in my experiences. But what it means for something to be accessible changes depending on what community you're in. You know, in New York City, where so many people are um, so of, of day schools and Jewish homes, like they move to the Upper West Side so they can have that kind of experience. Accessibility means something different than if you can assume no Hebrew knowledge on the part of anybody walking into the room. And I think both of those are valid. It's really just about how do you make something that's both accessible but meaningful. Too often we accessible, we make things accessible by dumbing them down and by dumbing them down in spirit and content. And too often when things are meaningful, they can't be accessed by people who aren't on the inside track. And if I think if we're going to continue to have a vibrant Judaism, especially really in conservative congregations, we need to find ways to do both. We need to find ways to keep, make things deep and meaningful and keep them accessible for anybody who's walking in.
right? So it's accessible and meaningful, not accessible, but meaningful, right? Like that, that and, yeah, um, so is so, so important. We're not mutually exclusive. So for which crowd would this, the, the, uh, the list of, of melodies and, uh, and choices that you made be appropriate? So often, actually, uh, the list would be for both. What are some of the things that might change? And Shira Bajira services go wrong. They just do, people know that they're going to come and sing for a long time. So we might make every single choice on that. But if I'm going into a synagogue, um, so often Kabbalah Shabbat, and when they say that, they also mean Marev, mm -hmm. is an hour, then we have to be very intentional about the choices we make. Almost every melody has to do double duty or be there for some reason. Um, so. I'll probably only pick one or two fun things to do, but I'll also probably only sing three songs of Kabbalah Shabbat, the Charodi, and something after that. I'd much rather in those situations do a few things deep and meaningful than try to rush through because part of the overwhelmingness of the Sidur is when people don't know Hebrew, it can be very hard. Another thing that I often do, and maybe I'll share an example with you, is especially for Kabbalah Shabbat when we're only doing a line or so from every psalm, I'll write my own Sidur because I think the translations and the language that we use for prayer also keeps people from having that meaningful connection. So I try to um, make things that are more expansive. I write God with an exclamation point because I think God is an unhelpful word um, because it's a word for something so much deeper. So it's exploding the word pieces and I use other translations um, instead. Um, so I think those are things that we can do. And that's, again, a whole much longer conversation about how to make services meaningful um, and accessible. But that's the work that, that, that I've been doing with congregations, which has been really exciting, as well as in the Minyanim in my own life. So we, we, have to, we have to wrap things up. And we, obviously, we could go on for a much longer time. And I would love to do that. And we should. I hope you stay for the after party yeah. so we can, uh, we can keep the conversation going. But um, I did promise you a chance to talk, uh, talk quickly about uh, what you're up to right now working with your working congregations, and then we'll, we'll, uh, we'll, we'll wrap up. Um, so, so that really, that actually was kind okay. of it. <laughs> what I'm doing, I've been, um, you know, working as a consultant, which is very exciting. I think congregations where uh, the regulars and folks who visit and clergy have a sense that services and davening aren't as good as they could be. But when we drill down, what does good mean, right? That's the hard part, is trying to figure out what success would look like, um, what, what a good outcome would be. And sometimes it takes an outsider's eye to figure out who are the players here and really why are we praying? Prayer, prayer is really hard um, because not only are we trying to sign our name to love letters we didn't write, but then we, um, in a rational world, give ourselves permission to call out to the history of the universe when that's incredibly, you know, it can be countercultural or it can seem Christian or it can seem all of those things, but it's, it's human nature. And it's the only, only by like feeling those feelings and asking for help will we be able to, um, you know, in my mind, all of this is moving us towards a world um, of oneness and that's what we need to be doing. So that is the esoteric way of saying that I work with synagogues one-on-one, um, -on -one, um, through meetings, through visits. Um, I was just in Philadelphia, one of the synagogues I'm working with, conducting listening sessions with five different segments of the synagogue population, really just trying to learn where are people at in their spiritual lives, what are they looking for, what do they need, um, instead of trying to sell people a Judaism that they don't think they need, asking people what they need and figuring out how to meet them uh, where they are. So that's that in a nutshell. Uh, but, but please let me know if, if you're interested. I'm really excited about doing this work because I care about synagogue life and I care about Jews and I care about people. And it's, it's such an honor and a blessing. Well, it's, it's clear that any, any congregation or or Minion, or even us, that has an opportunity to learn with you and to dabble with you is truly lucky, truly blessed. And we are really grateful that you took the time to come and, and, and be with us today. And I hope you come and visit again, uh, as we say in Chicago, uh, about voting uh, early and often. So uh, hope thank you so much, Eliana. Thank Absolutely. Thank you so much for coming on.
and uh, definitely will be using some of those melodies um, and your avatolam also, which was just just beautiful. Um, can we uh, get Sarah on? Sarah, I think you were. Yes, Cantor. Geller. Cantor there Geller. Too. Thank you again, Eliana. Hey. Hello. Hi. Okay. Hi. Uh, speaking of dumbing down, that's kind of what I do. And um, I have a little melody for Via Hulu. And it works best if you have your shakers. Okay. And I did give the sheet music and I did give the words to it. Okay. So shall I start? Yep, go ahead. Okay. God made the blue sky up above. God made the flowers that we love. God made the fishes and the frogs and the donkeys and the dogs and the birds up in their nest. God made a woman and a man and then God made a plan to give us all a day of rest. La 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 Okay, and then you sing that in Hebrew with Vayachulu. Vayachulu ha-shamayim Ve'ha-aretz ve'chol tzivam Vayachal Elohim Ba'yom ha-shvi'im Elav tov asher asa Vayashbot ba'yom ha-shvi'im Nikom elav tov asher asa Everybody sings. La 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 <laughs> That's great. Um, so when do you use this? Do you use this on a regular Friday night? We sing this every Friday night. And I sing it with the kids. We sing it in religious schools. We start out in English, then we go to Hebrew. We sing it like many a Sunday morning in Hebrew school, but like every Friday night we sing this melody. And then when we have our, uh, sometimes we have instrumental Friday nights. And so everybody gets one of these and they're shaking along. Nice. And that's it. Nice. Thank you so much for sharing that. Okay. Um, it's definitely a, uh, a, a crowd picker upper, you know, you, you wake up and, um, you know, maybe you've been, uh, lulled into some of the more moderate or mellow Friday night evening kind of tunes and then all of a sudden here you go so. well where I am people respond more to the upbeat stuff mm -hmm. they really want to be lifted up and they want some joy and happiness that's great okay that's wonderful. thanks and that definitely works <laughs> thank you thank so you, much Sarah. for sharing okay and now we have on the other side of the coin coin we have Alexander Massey, are you ready? Uh, hang on. Thank you, Sarah. Okay. Do I turn myself off or do you turn me off? <laughs> you don't have to turn <laughs> off. Okay. Just mute. Okay. Alexander. Okay. Can you hear me? We can hear you, yes. Good. Okay. Now we can see you. So, uh, Wendy uh, very kindly suggested I might uh, do something with uh, Hashki Benu, um, a setting of mine, which uh, it doesn't use the whole text. It's a long text. Um, so I've, uh, what I've done is, is cherry pick um, some of the um, sentences um, and also tucked in even a tiny little bit of English. And in fact, it's, it's ended up being used um, a lot in the UK. It's used in sort of reform and liberal communities here. Um, and every two years we have a Sherry Hagigar. What did, do you know Cantor Zoe Jacobs? Does that name mean something over your side? I don't know. Um, she's again, she's been involved with Havana Shira and the sort of reform movement, I think. Um, anyway, she's sort of, it's sort of used as the anthem at their sort of annual conference, sort of two, 
you know, every two years they do it in the, so here it is. Here's a little bit of, of what happens. <clears throat> it can be done without guitar, but since I got one here, I'll do it with guitar. Ashki Oh, okay. Sorry. <laughs> You're right. Uh, <laughs> I was just going to say that was, it was beautiful. Really um, puts you in a, a, a wonderful mood. Um, be thoughtful. And uh, my congregation particularly really likes to be introspective um, during marriage. So I think that that uh, works very well. Um, so we thank you very much. We have Marshall next. And he's going to be doing an Avatulam. A little something different. Hello. Hi. How you doing? <laughs> okay. <laughs> so I also have, um, I wrote out a copy of um, the Ugandan No Say Shalom, too, I can share with everybody. So, Ricky, that's for you. All okay. right. <laughs> All right, here we go. This is my Avatulam. And I'll share it as well. Avatolam Beit Yisrael Amecha Avatolam 
Torah umitzvot, chukim umishpatim otanu limadita. Back to the beginning. Ahavat olam Beit Yisrael Amecha Tata Alken Adonai Eloheinu Beshochveinu kumeinu nasiach bechukecha. Then the chorus again, and then venismach bedivrei toratecha uvmitzvotecha leolam ba'ed. Ki heim chayeinu Behorek yameinu Uvahem nege Yomam valayla Ahavat olam Beit Yisrael What's that? Very nice. You know, I I do several of your tunes, and they're always very easily accessible. And Thank I think you, this sweetie. is, again, one of those. Um, I was really tired of singing, Avat Olam Beit Yisrael. I'm going to have to sing this again next week. Um, but I think that this is def could definitely be a replacement for that, because it has the yeah. same kind of, you know, um, the, the same kind of mood, the same kind of uh, lilt, but um, but it's different. And I love it. Thanks. And it has a chorus and that's great and it has a little harmony at the beginning i just posted it oh, okay good. so awesome. all right thank you guys right. thank, thank, you. You. thank you thank you wendy thanks it. for sharing thank you next uh luis catan has got some good stuff to share with us uh yeah um, thank you it's a pleasure being here i learned so much for everyone here it's uh it's really good always love having you um so uh i just trying to Share, that's okay. No, I'm not going to share now, I'll share later. And actually, uh, I just decided to change some chords in the mm -hmm. what I wrote. So, <laughs> um, uh, and there is a, another, is there, there's another poll, right? That, um, that uh, we can maybe. Uh, oh, yeah, let's put up the other poll. Yeah, let's put up the other poll, which is uh, Are we doing Igdal or Adunalam for the end? <laughs> or even and, uh, Shalom Aleichem. Yeah, or Shalom Aleichem. And, um, and, and there is a, a very powerful, um, there is a very powerful, uh, I would say, I just answered, um, uh, difference between uh, what is uh, Adon Olam in terms of uh, 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 the vision of what we believe and Igdal. Igdal is based on the uh, 13 uh, principles of Maimonides, and Maimonides was like the ultimate uh, non-imaging uh, guy. I mean, there should be no image whatsoever, even imaginary image. Uh, and um, and I would say that Adon Olam contrasts that because, I mean, while Igdal has Einlo de Mutaguf and uh, Adon Olam has Beyado of Kidruhi, right? That, that, in Igdal, there is no no uh, shape on his uh, on his body. There is no body, and uh, uh, and Adon Olam has the and Adon Olam oh, has the. Uh, okay, I'll send him down that way. Okay. okay. Thanks. And Adon Olam has the Beyadov uh, uh, which is uh, I will I will place my 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 uh, soul on his hand, and it's totally a uh, human like shape. Okay, so. Mm -hmm. Um, like many things, uh, this stuck in my head because I was listening to some klezmer music, and uh, and then I realized after I put it down and I put it in, in, in music that it was very similar to what I was listening to. But uh, that's why I'm I'm, uh, I'm acknowledging the source, and it goes like this. 
אדון עולם אשר מלך, בטרם כל יציר נברא, תהד נשא וחפצו כל, אזי מלך שמו נקרא, ואחרי כפלות הכל, לבדו עם נוף נורא, והוא היה והוא עובר. והוא יהיה בתי פרה, והוא אחד בהם שני, להמשילו להפירה, ולראשית ולתחתית, ולא עוז להמיסה, והוא אלי בחי גואלי, וצורכי בי בצרה, והוא נשיא בין הכוסי ביום הרקע, וידו עד כי תוכי, והתישן בהרינה, ואם רופי גביעתי, אדוני ליבנו ידע. And also has to do with the upbeat that Sarah was mentioning with her. Recently, we can slow down this and make it really like a, a little thing, I mean, very slow thing, and it will change totally the mood, although the melody will be exactly the same. Yeah, absolutely. It would change everything, I think. Um, but that, it's wonderful. I like it both ways. <laughs> Thank right. you so much for sharing. Thank you, everyone. We're, so we are at our one o'clock time period, which means uh, on the one hand, our song swap is over, but it's time for the after party. So if you have melodies that you would like to share, go or at it. you have well, requests. <laughs> wait a minute, we gotta, we gotta do our official ending first, which is, okay. uh, which is to go out with music. We always go out with music. <clears throat> so we're gonna, let me, uh, let me play. We'll finish, uh, do a little bit more of the Aton Cats. Uh, video <clears throat> and then we will come back as soon as that's done with the after party so um, I want to and did thank we you announce there. the date have yes to announce the date and what we have for next week next next month on uh, December 4th I believe is okay. uh, is an amazing follow-up to today we're going to be having uh, Basia Schechter and uh, David Ingberg from, from Roman Mu. So the, an amazing team, Chazan Basia Schechter and Rabbi David Ingberg are going to talk about how they, uh, they approach their services and, and uh, share some of their favorite melodies for Pesuke the Zimra. We're gonna move on to Shabbat morning next week. And uh, I also, we also have another live in-person song swap coming up on March 24th <laughs> in New York when, um, get as many people as we can there and we're gonna come be back with a whole bunch more next year we're gonna have uh, hopefully by the time our second birthday comes we'll have uh, hundreds more uh, hundreds more songs for you to you guys to use so thanks for joining us and I'm gonna share my screen right now and thank you Mike for everything that you do yes and thank you guys thank Jeremy ah. and Wendy for because you guys do all the work reaching out to all the people and lining up all the people to sing every week and uh, Really, Actually, I want to say we had a lot of people who came to us this time, and I was so thrilled. So, if you have something that you want to share um, again for Psuke next time, come and it just how do you start your services? How do you create that beginning, um, even when there aren't so many people there? So, <laughs> so please get, reach out to us, and, and uh, we'll be happy to let you share. All right. Hopefully, we'll see you. We'll see you next month. Thank you.
something also right michelle are you still here okay everybody i can't unmute all everybody is on mute. hi i'm here michelle hi Hello. hi hi what, what was your uh tune for so i have a i have an ahavato lam oh, nice. and it's a um it's a it's a doo-wop ahavato lam um, this this is by um, a friend of mine um, who I went to college with, and uh, his name is Richard Samuels, and we sang together in a um, uh, in a Jewish a cappella group called Honorable Mention um, in the in the Boston area, and uh, he looked at Ahavat Olam. You know that sounds like I'm sorry. Somebody's uh, making a lot of noise in like Somebody's a kitchen or something, really maybe. Um, yeah. <laughs> well, I think that we just unmuted everybody. Yes, you unmuted so everybody. So if you're like happens. in your kitchen, if maybe if you could mute yourself or something. Um, anyway, so um, eternal love. He said, "Okay, this sounds like a doo wop song." And um, so we had uh, one of the base, uh, one of the bases would start off with, thank you, Lord, for your eternal love. Um, and then um, the, the tune goes like this. Ahavat olam beit Yisrael. Amcha ahavta Torah umitzvot chukim umishpatim otanu zimadta al ken adonai rohenu meshofenu ufkumenu natziach bechukecha v'nismach b'nivrei Torah you can do the ending two different ways um if nobody sings along with you or knows it you can just do oh, hey, and maybe people will go Amen. Yeah, they're, um, they're the downstairs other way is neighbors. Um, 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 they're they're yeah. Amen. And then we had our, our tenor would go, Amen. Hey. <laughs> You know, <laughs> that, <one. laughs> that is so fun. 
That's really fun. Yeah. That's right. <laughs> exactly. yeah. So That's I actually so use fun. that. I've used like that right sometimes now. in places <laughs> yeah, where, you know, they, they want something different. I'm like, all right, you want something different? Um, here's something different. Here's something different. Right, exactly. Do you have the music to it? Um, I can get the music to it. Um, and uh, I can probably share um, a, a recording of the, the group doing it. Um, so you can hear how it really went with the, you know, with the. Now they have there's a leak on the roof because they've got water, they've got water coming through their um, setting room. Oh, somebody's somebody got yeah. water coming yeah. to their something. Somebody's <laughs> got water. Okay. There, in a few there we go. All All right. Right. Thank, Thank you gonna so much for sharing myself that. Yeah, again. if you can. Okay, so I have been, I'm going to jump in here because I, there's a couple people that have, uh, <coughs> several people now have asked for me to mute everybody again. And uh, I think uh, that is our first after party lesson. But, uh, <laughs> we still have, have to keep everybody muted. So I'm going to mute everybody now uh, and I'll unmute people. Hey, Catherine, uh, it's Jerry Robbins. I am the director of the Jazz. And I, um, Jerry was Robbins last is year and mute. ostensibly this year as well. Okay. Um, just wanted to touch. Okay. I am the only one now who is not muted. So I'm going to unmute Wendy. And uh, I don't know if Jeremy, I don't even see Jeremy on here. Jeremy is over there. There he is. Okay, I want to meet Jeremy. If you have something you want to share, you are going to have to write it into the, the chat. Yeah, and I Gil see Hathering, that as always, has something to share. So let's get Gil on. Gil, yeah. I got Gil. And Neil Schwartz also mentioned mm -hmm. that he has something. So let's uh, start <laughs> with Gil. Neil, I think, was next, next, had something for next month. But let's hear Gil. Always rocking in the house. <laughs> um, so, I've actually got uh, two things. Um, the first one is um, something I wrote um, when I was asked to, I was interning at uh, Congregation Bethel of Montgomery County under uh, Matt Oster Klein. And um, I was um, lucky that my last weekend there was his farewell tribute. Oh. And I was asked to do something, and I was given two choices, either Actually, I can't remember what the first one was, but I chose, you know, okay, I'll do something at the end of the Amidah. And so I wrote this uh, Elohai Nitzor. Um, and it just starts with the, uh, the first Elohai Nitzor line and then jumps to uh, Yul Ratzon. Um, so I, I haven't played it in a while, but I'll, I'll try, I'll do my best. Here we go. Yeah. Elohai Nehetzo Leshoni Meira Usfatai Mita Ber Mirma Velim Kalai Nafshi Tidom Venafshi Eloh <laughs> Adonai And then it just goes back to Elohai Netzor. Back. Cool. Very, very cool. Um, <laughs> a lot of people don't have anything for that, so that's good. And it's it's something that a lot of times when I use it, instead of using singing the words, I I sing it as an igun. Mm -hmm. um, now, do you do it without the guitar ever? That's a big question. I usually do it without a guitar. Oh, good. Okay. Um, the and the other thing I have to share is actually a, a vishamru. Um, cool. And it's. One I wrote while I was uh, 
studying in Israel with, uh, uh, let's see, all the cantoral students were studying with Raymond Goldstein. Um, and, and I decided that uh, every week I would alternate between studying repertoire and studying composition. Um, so I wrote this uh, Vishamru with, um, while studying with him. Um, and I can also, I can send uh, PDFs of both of these. Awesome. And I'll, I'll try to play the guitar louder, but I don't know if the, uh, um, I, I don't know if the microphone is just not picking it up or what's going yeah, on. Yeah, I, I think it's more important that we hear the melody, like mm -hmm. your voice. And actually um, with this one, I'll, this yeah. one, the, the Vishamru I wrote to kind of a uh, piano part to mimic guitar, but um, also this is something I usually do a cappella as well when I use it. Um, and it's Vishamiru Vene Israel Et HaShabbat Lasot Et HaShabbat Ledorotam Berit Olam Beni uven bene Israel oti leolam ki sheshet yamim asadonai et hashamayim ve et haaretz. Nice. Really nice. Really nice. Yeah. I like that. So, and do you, and you do that also normally without accompaniment? Right. Um, uh, I use, I rarely use instruments on, on Friday night or Saturday morning. So mm -hmm. I, uh, uh, everything is acapella. Yeah. Yeah. Well, we have the same issue <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> And I think um, I think we did a poll at one point um, at the beginning of our time together, um, song swap, to see how many people actually used instruments. And um, I would be interested now in knowing how many people are struggling with trying to figure out how they can use it, you know, and, and what they're going through in their congregations to try to make that happen. Well, that's what um, I. That's the that's the problem I have. I can't. Yeah. I, we don't use instruments at all. We don't either. And so many of these melodies that I hear, I really love, but I don't know how you would pull it off without, without instruments. And even, I mean, the one, we don't even pound on things in my shul. The rabbi, really? it just really grates on them. So it's, uh, you know, even- uh, I couldn't do it. Like the percussive sounds just, it's all, it's all singing. It's oh all singing. Oh so I have a, I'm, I, I struggle sometimes to find you know, the right stuff that'll work, you know, without any instruments and without, you know, any percussive sounds. Oh, that must be so out. hard. Wow. Stuff is there. Speaking so of hard. Like that, though, I want to hear Jeremy's Magena vote. I, mm, I, me too. So awesome. Um, Thanks, Gil. You're welcome. And I'm going to put the PDFs in the chat. Um, Yay. And there's a I have a recording of the Vishamru on my website, which is gillezering.com, um, with uh, Joyce Rosenzweig on the piano. Awesome. Ooh. Love her. Can I throw in an idea? <laughs> sure. Sure. Um, because I, I do have instruments, and so I can't imagine the difficulty of not having them. But I, but I will tell you that, that gorgeous Vishamru, Gill, so I could already hear a you know, a harmony, an obligato, right? Ooh. And I'm thinking that, Mike, maybe there are ways to teach just a hummed set of chords, even to two people, you know, like it wouldn't have to be the whole choir, yeah. just to create those 
the chords that, yes, are necessary for so many of these pieces for them to really lift off the ground. But maybe they're, you know, it's the Mishorering. It's I agree. You know, yeah, I, I agree, Ricky. Have, and they can that. learn from the they can learn from the recordings. They can get yeah. the chords in their head. But if there are people who, you know, are Mishagea about harmonizing anyway, maybe they can be, um, you know, team players and make yeah. sure to be present on nights that you want to teach something in particular. That's tough, and though. Joey has a whole thing that he does when he comes to shows, Joey Wasenberg, when he comes to different shows and he teaches you how to make your synagogue into a choir. <clears throat> so, you know, may, maybe that's something to look into. I know that Josh Wachowski is also doing something similar to that. It's kind of the next thing, right? If you can't have instruments yeah. on Shabbat, then how do you create your own instrumentation? Well, Paul, um, Paula, Paula just wrote in the chat, like Steve Storr's congregation. I don't know anything about Steve Storr's congregation, but Paula, can you, you want to say something else about that? Because uh, Yeah, be I, um, it was at a convention, oh gosh, it could have been 10 or 12, maybe more years ago. And he, oh, the Michelle Ream. Yes, he had, yeah. he had like maybe right. four guys and then right. he had taught and they came around. I want to say particularly for the Kedusha mm -hmm. or something or the rep repetition. I think but, it was the Kedusha, yeah. But, um, it, you know, that certainly could be used other times. And yes, for Joey sure. is even a better, uh, not better, a, a modern example of that yeah. as well. But um, uh, yeah, that, that's all I got. Yeah, no, that's... <laughs> That's exactly what I think we're talking about is just the challenge of, of not being able to have that, you know, and, and, and what do you do in place of it? And what do you do, you know, to still enhance, but to, yeah. It's, so the Ilufinu, the Ilufinu conference this Sunday mm, right. is presumably going to address some of that. And for anyone, I don't, I'm hoping that it will be recorded in some way for anyone. Who's yeah, yeah, I think it's it supposed is. to be streamed. It's going to be streamed. I don't know where, gonna streamed? Okay. it's, also, also, it's going to be recorded. Don't want, yeah. Yeah, it's definitely going to be recorded, but I thought it was also supposed to be streamed. So we have so, to get somebody gums it, gums to figure that out. But I guess yeah. I'm thinking, you know, this is yeah. where the song swap. Yeah, where did Matt go? That would have been a good uh, question Matt, to ask him. Yeah, I think he had to, I think he had to go. Wow. But uh, anyway, Jer I want to hear Jeremy's My Gain of Hope. Let's you go, will never hear anything like this anywhere else. You're only going to hear it here. <laughs> so I wrote this melody originally on guitar and then to present it in a non-instrumental setting, I wrote a male a cappella version of it, so. Exactly like what we're talking about. Kivamrata leani aklaem, lefanav navo virava pachad benadel ishma bechayon tamid. Ein abrachot, el ahodot adon ashalom, mekadesh ashabad uvarit shini, umeni yafik yishalei amidushen eonek, all right, so first time I heard that, first time I heard that was at your New South presentation, like over 10 years ago. <laughs> I can't remember, what, what kind of reception did you get from, the, from, the, uh, from our teachers? Um disdain <laughs> that was so not surprising <laughs> uh, okay <laughs> i wonder what it would be like this now if you if you presented it now i feel like it would probably get a little warmer response oh. maybe <laughs> depending on who. <laughs> okay. i think okay. there was i think there was surprise i don't know there was i guess there was surprise that i was presenting my original composition and that it was mm -hmm with jazz harmonies. Um, but I feel strongly about it. It's what? well within the, you know, the Magena Vot Nusach is somewhat amorphous, but um, it's very much within the uh, Magena Vot Nusach, um, both in the minor going to the relative major and back to the back to the minor and ending on the five. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, I mean, but but I would go. I I immediately wanted to go right back to the yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah so na, 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 na. when I do it, but, when I do it in concert, I'll often go back to. Um, ah, go I back wanted to go beginning. back there. Yeah, yeah. Oh, it's so fun! I love it. I love it. Sheet music. Yeah, I can get Got that. It. Put it up there, please. That is so much fun. Um, Steve Walvik also had one that he did um, kind of, you know, same jazzy feel. Um, and, and I love that. Maybe we'll try to get him to present sometime. He has kind of a similar. Can I, uh, can I mention something? Is it? Yeah, sure. um, Free. Steve, Free Steve Walvik just put up uh, on his Facebook page. Um, Oh shoot! Uh, um, to use this week for Yigdal, for uh, about oh, 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 uh, Avraham. Right. Now I can't oh, think right. of who it was. Was it? Was it like? It's not One Direction. Field, but, one but, Direction. Well, I think it's One Direction. No, it? it was no. Isn't it like something like a little less like so? Can, uh, no, I thought uh, it was. All right. Um, Maybe not. Anyway, no, no, yeah. I can't, but but anyway, it was. If you go to Steve Waldick's uh, Facebook page, it was really clever for this week. I know, and he, um, and couldn't I, come, I, he couldn't come today. I asked him, but he wasn't able to. But if you're friends with him or, anyway. not, or not, you know, go to his Facebook page. And it's really awesome. It's, it's, yeah, it's fun. Um, let's definitely go there. All right. Do we have anybody else? Oh, Neil Schwartz, did you still want to share? Well, Neil's was, Neil, wasn't yours for uh, Pazuke de Zimra? Oh, I'm sorry, was it? I didn't see. It's the after party, so, you know, we don't yeah. have to be uh, Marib anymore. True enough. True that. True that. Um, I mean, I have. I'll. I'll do. I'll do the one that I had. Uh, I'll do the one you uh, had. It's. Uh, I don't know where this came from, but I heard Ofer Barnoy sing it in a concert that I and I only came. I only saw the the, the recording online, so I don't know exactly um, where this melody came from, but I heard or how it's really supposed to end. I, I learned it at uh, at my last uh, synagogue at Brotherhood Synagogue, and it was one of their staple melodies that had to be there. I was told that there were, you know, a couple melodies that uh, were sacrosanct, and this was one of them. Uh, despite the fact that nobody actually knew how to how to really sing it for me, uh, but here's what I got. Eloheinu. So that's uh, that's that one. So I wish I knew. I knew. I wish I knew where it actually came from, but I don't. So there you go. Let's say, Is anybody still not muted? I don't hear anybody. Wendy, oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I was again. <laughs> I'm. I'm. Sending a, a, a message. Alexander wants to share an Abad alum, but um, after that, if y'all are interested, I found good use for the Constantinople Turkish melody for Yigdal, and uh, I don't think that's overly well known. So if no one else has other stuff that they want to share after Alexander's <laughs> gone with his. Definitely so. want to hear that. Abad alum, uh, yeah, me too. Sure. Uh, before before, oh, one this, before anybody yeah. does, I just want to say uh, I know Jeremy has to. Uh, I know Jeremy has to go. So uh, thank you, Jeremy. 
And Thank I'll just you, correct Jeremy. myself. When I said disdain, I think there was more of just of a look of. <laughs> it, wasn't, it wasn't disdain. It was uh, well, yeah, like, geez, maybe uh, just surprise. weren't expecting that. Right. Right. <laughs> <laughs> All right, everyone. Thank thanks, for Jeremy. Thanks for sticking around for the after party. Sorry, I have to head out, but look forward to seeing everyone next month. Ah, All right. Thank you so much. Thanks, Jeremy. All right, uh, Alexander. Yep. Sure. Um, so this has been done in all sorts of ways. It worked as a duet. I've done it as a kind of choral thing uh, for four parts, um, and also just congregationally, people do join in when we do it in Oxford. It works fine without guitar, but... Avat olam Beit Yisrael Amechavta Amechavta Torah to mitvot Kukimu mishpatim Otanulimadeta <laughs> Etc. It just cycles through that tune basically. Very nice. Very nice. Very little thing. I like it. And Paula, thank you for sharing. Yeah, Paula, I want to hear this story. I don't I don't remember it. You probably told it. To our class too, but I just don't remember. So um, the rabbi didn't want, I think it was Wolfberg. I don't remember, but somebody, <laughs> so David, for sure, Davidson told the story. I think it was probably the rabbi didn't want maybe Wolfberg to um, use a new melody. And um, he said, fine. So then um, uh, he used it over and over and over and over. And then by the end of the service, it wasn't a new melody anymore. Wasn't a problem. So, <laughs> so, that's so, great. so if I want to use a melody for Mim Komcha, like I'll use it El Adon because that's so rhythmic and then Mim Komcha and then like, you know, then you can also bring back for Adon Olam and like, okay, they know it, you know. Got or, or it, yes. So it's kind of like, like, uh, yes. so like Eliana's technique. But that's, I think, what it, exactly. Yeah, yes. exactly yes. what Eliana was saying, right. Yeah, but I don't think I do it at night so much. So I'm going to think about what she was saying to do it at night as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's a, it's definitely an interesting idea to see how met, how I mean, you know, I'm always thinking about how does the text relate to how does the music relate to the text and and does it and can one melody I mean, there was something that she shared I think that I said that I wanted to I I wanted to use for everything, right? The, um her um, yeah. and uh you know, so that kind of the, that kind of melody, I think, can really be applied in a bunch of different places. Um, but I don't think that works all the time. So no. it really just depends, you know, I, maybe it would work throughout a particular service. But I don't know that I would take it from Shabbat morning to Friday night to, you know, high right. holidays, like that kind of thing. You know what I mean? So, no. so um, I think there was a Hanukkah melody or something, uh, something not very common. And maybe I wanted to use it in Hallel or something. So I used it for El Adon and maybe I used it for Mim Komcha. And then, and then by the Hallel, okay, you know, and I'm, so, something, so it was like with a goal in mind and it worked for the other thing. So, yeah. Right, exactly, exactly, yeah. Uh, there, there are a bunch of people still, still left here yes. who uh, haven't, uh, haven't shared anything. They don't necessarily, I, you know, people don't have to share. That's the whole to. thing about it. You could just come and listen. But I would all, you know, since this is kind of like the more informal after party, I'd love to just meet some of the people who are here that we don't, we don't already know. I know, you know a lot of people here that are left are CA people, but there's a few names on here that I can tell you. Uh, unfortunately, I know Gabe Kretschmer-Seed can't, can't share because he's on a, he probably 
doesn't have a call the ability or something. To, yeah. To, uh, but I know Neil stuff. wanted to share something. Well, before before that, I want to see that. like okay. I want to just give people a chance to introduce themselves if they want to. Sure. But it's, there's two Helene's here. Uh Helene Rausch and Helene Santo. Hello. Um also let's see, there's uh Robin Streitman. And uh I think that's just those are the only three people here that I don't know. But uh if you guys want to introduce yourselves, just feel free to unmute. Otherwise, we just keep singing. Uh, okay. Yeah. They, oh, they they're want. they're muted though. No, but can they, they unmute can, themselves? Every, people can unmute themselves. Anybody, oh, okay. anybody wants to can unmute themselves. Uh, but anyway, um, Neil, you said you had something to want to. Well, this. This is not an original melody, but it's one that I think uh, doesn't get much use. When I have used it with the right the small Friday night crowd uh, before I came to this Reform Temple, um, this has always been very compelling and people have really loved it. Uh, it's available in at least one, if not more, of um, the Tower Publication books uh, published by available Pastor Next Day for No Labor Cup. Igdalelo <laughs> Can moon look full of our sin, Ivra? Priest on the in race, le race, to etc. Does it make me want to drink? <laughs> <laughs> Where's the, the schnapps? You we thought we were gonna have schnapps, you. Mike. <laughs> yeah, I think that's uh, that. That's uh, on that note. I think we should uh, we should wrap up wrap this party up. Uh, we're okay. running, I think we're, we're running on fumes here. But, uh, oh, <laughs> one last tune that you, I know you know this tune, just one second. And Wendy, I'm sure you've heard me do this before. <laughs> Schnapps. Adonolam Ashemalach Beterankol it's in It's in The eight nasa, the chef so cold, a sign melech, shimoni cra. The ahare kichot ha cold, the mahado, yimloch no ra. And it fits to the whole song. That's what's so nice about a donal mom. It's almost any tune. It's true. I don't think Led Zeppelin had that in mind when they went at the time. <laughs> I don't think they could have dreamt that at all. <laughs> <laughs> I'll leave you on that note. <laughs> that was a good note. I love that song. Oh, all man. Right. <laughs> this all was right. great. This was Let's, great. Uh, I think the door is, the, the, the bar is closing. It's time to go no. home. All right. You this has been, more. I think. I love the after party. I think this is uh, me too. Could be uh, could be a new feature, uh, a new weekly, fe a new monthly feature. Let's see, yeah. see how it goes. But, but we can find a way to have virtual shots as well. <laughs> yes. <laughs> we no double should. entendre intended. <laughs> shots, shots, sorry. Shots, shots, shots. Right. All right, <laughs> y'all. I like All it. right. Thanks for coming to the party. Thanks, Bye, everybody. Thanks. See y'all. Um, if you ever want to share. Let us know, give us a yep. shout out, and we'll be happy to have you share. All right. Thanks so Take much. It easy, y'all. Thanks.